Before we get started, I just want to say uh, thank you to JD and Betty for becoming new members of the channel. Um, really appreciate people supporting me um, here. It really helps. Even the slightest amount of money helps me uh, sort of do these videos and contribute more to the community. So really, really appreciate this. And with that, let's get started with some new StyleGAN 2 things. I've been training on StyleGAN 2 ADA for about a week now. Um, and I previously recorded a video just on like my initial thoughts on day one. And I thought I'd follow up um, a week into training because I think um, I've learned a little bit. I've, I want to backtrack on some of my previous statements and um, also think that there's just a lot to learn from, from this repo. And um, I'm really excited to keep continuing on it. Um, I also taught my second week of StyleGAN 2 ADA training um, with my class. Uh, this was previously just going to be a StyleGAN 2 like Skyfly Nil, uh, Sky Nil uh, repo class and this repo the new repo came out like a week beforehand um, and it seemed like a great opportunity to start teaching it. So um, just going over a bunch of materials, you'll see videos from that series probably in the next uh, couple weeks um, once the class wraps up. So uh, I think there'll be more, lots more material about the new repo um, as we go through it. This is a, a loop of sort of the newest um, version of training. Um, it's, it's again, it's sort of like Apple's, it's like StyleGAN 1 to StyleGAN 2. There was a clear like quality improvement um, a clear new change in how it worked. And I would say again, with StyleGAN 2 to ADA, we're seeing an, another big leap in sort of overall quality. Um, you know, this is, these are much better flowers. They're much more like accurate to what flowers look like. Um, maybe that's good, maybe that's bad, depending on what sort of art you wanna make. Um, I, I think there's some value in, in it. Um, and there's a lot to learn from sort of the, the techniques on how they're training things. So um, really quickly, like, big improvement in just overall quality. Like pretty much hands down, I would say every model I've tested on has been improved. Um, clearly I'm not working with 70K data sets, but I'm you know I'm working with 1K to 5K uh, in general. Sometimes a little bit larger, but pretty rare. Um, just overall much better texture quality, much better uh, visual improvements. Um, you know, I think I'm a little concerned that maybe there's like some mode collapsing in this particular model, um, which I, I'll show in another video at some point. But um, overall, I think there's some big improvements and I'm really excited to keep uh, training on this. I've probably trained on, I've probably done about seven or eight different models at this point. Um, another huge, huge thing is that it's just really, really fast. Um, I'm like really surprised at just how much better the mixed precision is than Apex or other things I've used in the past. Um, this is, uh, I'm currently training on Colab on a V100, and you'll see uh, in a V100, um, for a single tick, so that's 4,000K images, um, it's about 12 minutes per tick, which is amazing. I think that's probably about 2x improvement over what I was seeing on a Titan RTX or on a V100 before, um, seeing about 24 minutes maybe beforehand. So um, 2x is like, that alone makes it worth pretty much everything. Even if it were just StyleGAN 2, but faster, I would take that. Um, so this is the a huge, huge improvement. One thing I will note is that it's clearly like, uh, mixed precision is optimized more for things like V100, RTX uh, G GPUs. Um, I've seen it not be as huge of a difference on something like a P series. Um, so the P100 is still clocking in about 30 minutes. And I wanna say before that it was maybe 40, 45. So it's not like having it, but it is improving it. And that's to be expected, you know, as we get older and older GPUs, um, we'll run into mixed precision issues. Um, I have some M series cards and they should have done support mixed precision. So they're kind of almost like, probably shouldn't be using style again on them anymore. But uh, with Colab, like, seeing huge improvements, which means training time is down, which means you can do fat, you can do more models in shorter periods of time. You can experiment a lot more and that alone is huge. So I think, you know, there's so many new configurations that we can start to play with, especially as we get to smaller data sets and, you know, maybe more complex uh, images and complex structures. Uh, this really frees us up to do different training and, and, and more optimizations and try different things. Um, and that's always been sort of a, a hurdle for anyone outside of big research labs, right? Um, you know, we don't have eight GPUs that we can just throw at everything or a thousand GPUs we can throw at various different tasks. So being able to do this um, on, you know, single GPUs and still have it feel pretty fast, it's pretty amazing. I also say, I think the convergence on this is also much faster. Um, you know, usually I, I previously would tell my students, you know, train for about a thousand K images. And that's when you start to really see how good your results are. Um, in these cases, I'm seeing good results like Re really, really quickly. Um, let me just pull up one of these here really quickly um, and sort of show you that. Actually, let's do this one. So this was actually trained on paper space. Uh, this is probably wrong here. Um, and so that was pretty slow because the P series doesn't really support mixed precision that well. Um, but you can see here, you know, this is, you know, this is actually probably four K images in. I think I had to stop a training before. Um, but if we go to 32, 
So 32k images in, and this is what your mo this is what your model starts to look like, right? Now uh, you can still see a little bit of faces here, but this is so quick. Um, and if you switch to 64, like this is already better than what I could probably ever get with StyleGAN 2. Um, just really, really amazing. Uh, a lot of I don't know if you've ever noticed, but like a lot of there there used to be a lot of like little watermark types of deals, or not even like the StyleGAN 2 like water bubbles, but just almost like waviness um, and images. And I think with the new augmentation strategy, a lot of that has been removed. Um, so you're getting much smoother sort of backgrounds. Um, and now that I'm looking at this close, I would definitely train this longer, and I am right now. Um, but you know, I, again, this is so much faster, and you converge on good results so much faster that again, like. We're at a point where, like, I can imagine seeing this put up on runway, and, like, I would have no problem telling a student, like, just run it for 5,000 steps on runway, and you have a good enough model. Um, whereas previously, I was sort of a little iffy just on how runway worked as a whole um, compared to training on, you know, a GPU uh, for a couple days at a time. So, you know, overall, huge quality and improvements, faster times. Those things alone make it really, really so much better. Um, I think I'd, I'd previously sort of been critical of the configuration model, um, and I still am a little conf I'm still a little uh, critical of the auto config. But I have sort of found that a bunch of other using that configuration step has actually made my workflow a bit faster. Um, I've set up some custom um, configurations that are just GPU based sized because I'm pretty much always doing 1024 by 1024 models, and just having that has um, made my workflow a lot easier. You still have to go in and hack in. Uh, to the training parameter uh, script file and edit some numbers every time I wanted to change from a 16 gigabyte GPU to a 24 gigabyte GPU. So now there's just a config that just sets all that for me. It's it's much nicer. Um, so, you know, again, I uh, was clearly a little critical of just sort of like all the changes. And I'm, I still, in some ways, I'm like a little critical of like renaming variables and those sort of things because it felt a little unnecessary. Um, but I do think overall the cleanup they've done has been a big improvement. So, um, you know, I don't really have a whole lot of complaints um, it, it took me, you know, it took me a day or two to figure out. I assume it will probably take my students a little bit longer um, just because they're not as, you know, day in, day out in this stuff. Um, but in general, I think all of the configuration changes and arguments they added were, were good. I've already seen, um, I am blanking on the person's name, um, someone has already uh, taken the non-square stuff and moved it into a repo. I'll share a link to that. Um, I'll probably bring that into my repo. My repo already supports a couple of Skyfly no things as well as having some custom configs. So I'm really, really excited about this work. Um, you know, just uh, pretty excited to just sort of see how it goes. So um, I think, you know, again, I was I was definitely critical and, and I want to backtrack a little bit on that because I do think a lot of this stuff has improved. However, I do have one big uh, criticism or just like one big note on things that I have found. Um, you know, a lot of the StyleGAN 2 ADA repo talks a lot about leakage um, and the idea that their models don't leak. Um, and I have to say, I have not found that to be the case. Um, I found a lot of leakage, mostly around the color augmentations. Um, so let me show you examples from here. Um, so these are examples of um, some some trains I've done. So on the left here, we've got a, a data set. Um, these are the reels, and the rights are my fakes. Uh, so clearly, this is leaking. Um, this is using either LumaFlip or some other coordinate. Um, and I ran this for probably probably 100, actually probably about 400k images to see if it would train out, and it did not. Um, so clearly there's like some issues where it's being sort of stuck in either local minima or it's just like picking up that leakage from the augmentations and sort of running with it. Um, I guess I understand why this is leaking. I mean, the, the basic structures of these flowers still look good. They're still green. They're still red. Um, but the background's clearly are wrong. So there's clearly something going on here, um, and that needs to be sort of resolved. Um, likewise, here's another data set. On the left are reels, on the right are fakes. Um, you see that it's going really heavy into purples. Um, and, you know... I just would restart training, um, and I would actually turn off uh, the color the color augmentations. Um, and yet another, here's another example where it's sort of leaking into pink. Um, so I would say, you know, I ran this on, what, seven or eight models, and about half of them leaked. So uh, clearly, like, maybe the, maybe the probabilities are wrong. I actually just have a theory that, like, my data sets are drastically different than what um, the NVIDIA folks train their data sets on. And that just means that, like, we get different results. Um, so I did find, I will say, like, if I just removed the color um, augmentation, so I think the default aug pipe is BGC. I just switched it to BG. Um, and I just saw, like, much better improvements. Um, and even the paper sort of notices or makes it makes a note to say that like color really doesn't do that much um, for these models. So uh, I would just confirm that like, you know, it's probably good to turn on BGC and just to try it. But um, in my experience, just not doing BGC and just doing BG um, 
is probably going to work fine for most of your data sets. Um, this one is now training a lot longer. Um, and I have to say, like, I've gotten good results. That video you showed was, I believe, maybe 400k images in at the very beginning of this class of this uh, chat. Um, but yeah, so this is it's, it's training really well. I'll also say that this data set has never really had a problem. I think because it has sort of a natural scaling effect in the way that I made it, um, it's generally always sort of converged well. So that might even mean that I don't even need as much augmentation in general. Um, but I'm going to keep playing with it and sort of play with different values and see what happens. So, you know, this is the biggest issue that I'm seeing so far is that I am definitely seeing leaking. And I think uh, this is something that we'll have to just keep an eye on as we train more models. Um, so this is just sort of, again, another really brief overview of sort of everything I've learned. I will um, definitely say to please, um, I don't want to say like and subscribe, but like do keep an eye on my channel because um, once our StyleGAN 2 ADA training class is over, we'll be releasing those videos. And there'll be a lot more details and a lot more context um, talked about in those. And those usually go up about a month after the class ends just because, you know, I want to give uh, people who paid for the class a little bit of uh, some value for their money. Um, but those will be up uh, probably in November at some point. And I think there'll be a lot more discussion. All I've learned a lot more with these. Um, I just put up uh, yesterday or today still, I guess, um, I put up how to tr how to start training these on paper space. Um, tomorrow will go up a how to train these on collab. Um, and there'll be some notebooks and, and links to things as well. So um, definitely going to be doing a lot more work on this probably for the next week or two as this class wraps up. Um, we probably will doing, be doing another show and tell as well. So um, if you're really interested in um, you know seeing what people, what students are making with this, um, I'll drop a note when we have a a time for that uh, show and tell so people can come and check that out. Um, cool. So that's about it for this. Um, I might do another update. I uh, probably won't do another weekly update, but maybe I'll do another update at the end of the month once I've trained things a little bit longer and have maybe um, worked out some things. I'm also going to be working on some models with some class labels, so that should be a fun um, little ex experiment that I'll be able to talk more about as well. Um, cool. So that's it for me. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll check you out next time. Thanks.